everyone. Greetings from my living room here. We're glad to be with you. Hope you had a good Lord's Day yesterday. We had a special service, wonderful hymns, and uh, seeking the Lord together. And so we trust the Lord met with you right where you are. I want to read two passages of Scripture, both from the Old Testament, that are simple, strong, amazing exhortations. You know, the Bible instructs us, it teaches us, it warns us, it comforts us, but it exhorts us. It exhorts us with commands. And one of the primary exhortations that's most important that the Bible ever gives is found in these two verses. I'm going to read from Zephaniah chapter 2. Zephaniah is after Habakkuk. So listen to this verse, Zephaniah 2, 3. Seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth, who have upheld his justice. Seek righteousness, seek humility. It may be that you will be hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. So there's three exhortations they're about seeking. Seek the Lord, seek righteousness, and seek humility. For it just may be that you, those who seek, will be hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. So Zephaniah, amazing exhortation, seek the Lord. And then Isaiah 55, verses 6 and 7, which is almost the greatest gospel call in the whole Old Testament. Pure exhortation. Isaiah, who wrote more about the gospel and, and his uh, prophecy than any place else in the Old Testament. Isaiah says this, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Let the wicked man forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. What an amazing exhortation that is by these Old Testament prophets to seek the Lord. It's a simple, clear, three-word exhortation. Seek the Lord. Now this is said many times in Scripture, but if there's ever a day that our nation and the world is called to turn their eyes away from what man can do, and to turn their thoughts, and their attention to the living God, it's today. And he says to all men, seek me, seek the Lord, seek to be truly humble. As Colossians 3 says, seek those things that are above, not the things that are on the earth. Amos 5, 4 echoes the same thing. Thus says the Lord, Seek me and live. Seek me and live. Those who will not seek God will die in their sins. But those who seek him will live. Psalm 119, verse 10, David says, With my whole heart have I sought you. With my whole heart have I sought you, O Lord. And Moses promises, God promises through Moses in Deuteronomy 4.29, if you seek the Lord with all your heart, you will find him. If you seek him with all your heart. It's a certain promise. Any person anywhere 
believer, unbeliever, if they will turn to God, turn their thoughts away from themselves and this world, no matter what they know, no matter how little they know, even in their ignorance, if they will turn to seek after the living God, if they'll do it with all their heart, sincerely, not perfectly, seriously, sincerely, they will find him, God promises. Hebrews 11 reminds us, he is a rewarder of those who seek him. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So how should we seek the Lord? Well, four simple ways. Number one, seek to know him. Paul cried out in Philippians, oh, that I might know him. And in, in the fellowship uh, of his sufferings, in the power of his resurrection, that I might know him. We need to seek just to know him, to know Christ intimately. He's a person. The Father, the Son, Holy Spirit are persons who are relational and they long to be sought. Jesus talked about uh, those who will worship God in spirit and truth. He talked about there's a day coming when men will seek to find me and they will not be able. So the day can come when your opportunity to seek the Lord is past but not for the Christian. We're to seek to know him in his person, in our relationship with him, and he wants that. Secondly, we are to seek to enjoy him. That means experience him. He wants us to enjoy fellowship with him, to enjoy communion, to enjoy the benefits of what the gospel has purchased for us, peace with God the joy of the Lord, assurance of salvation, righteousness and joy and peace in the Holy Spirit, which is the kingdom of God, Romans 14 tells us. We should seek to enjoy him. This is the pleasure of God. The more we enjoy him, the more we will know him and the more we will draw near to him. But thirdly, we're not only to seek to know him and to seek to enjoy him, we are to seek to serve him. Brothers and sisters, his service is joyful. His service is perfect freedom. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. We can serve him even though we're in isolation. It's not a time to not serve him. It's a time to serve him. Serve him with your phone by thinking of others and call them and check on them. Your relatives, your extended family, they, they have listening ears more now, right now, at least to serious things. Serve God with your phone and only use your phone to serve him or emails or FaceTime. One thing we did recently in our neighborhood, and it was Linda's idea, we made up a little card with my, with my uh, ministry card, my business card, stapled them together, and we went into our neighborhood, door to door. And everyone who opened the door to us, everyone was home, that was home opened the door to us, and they were warm and friendly. And all we said was, told them who we are, that we live in the neighborhood, and we're here to see if they have any needs that we could serve them with. Is there anyone we could pray for that you know has the virus? And we told them we're available to serve you. And everyone was very open to our contact. There's creative ways right where you are to serve your neighbors, to serve the neighborhood. You can speak a word to people when you're in the store, because their ears are perked up right now. Some people are afraid, they're looking for hope, and they may be more open right now to a word 
about the gospel, about the love of God, that he's controlling this, and to share scripture. So it's time to seek the Lord, not only to know him, to enjoy him, but to serve him. And finally, number four, we should seek to be like him. How can we be like him? Only the Christian can be like him. And when we came to know the Lord and he gave us a new heart and his spirit came to live within us, Christ's conformity started in that moment. God began to shape us progressively into the image of his son. But we're responsible to seek to be like him. And we know God has incommunicable attributes, which means his attributes that cannot be communicated to us by the Holy Spirit. Think of some of those. His sovereignty. We aren't sovereign. We can never be sovereign. We're dependent. His absolute freedom can't be communicated to us. He depends on nothing. His um, I'm thinking of some other ones right now. His omniscience. He's all-knowing. His omnipresence. He's everywhere. Those attributes are God's alone, and they can't be communicated to us. But his communicable attributes are the ones that the Holy Spirit brings to us. Love. Joy. Peace. Patience. Kindness. Those are the fruits of the Spirit. And God is like that perfectly, and he is shaping us to be that way more and more. We are to excel in mercy. We are to be patient. And you know, I found in this isolation time, shut in, that my patience sometimes wears thin. And Linda experiences that, and I have to be right with her. And we're maintaining. We're maintaining in patience and in love and in kindness. But brethren, we need to seek to be like our Savior in all ways as we're being conformed into his image. Now let me go back to those two passages of Scripture because it may be that someone watching may not be a true Christian. So if that's the case with you, I want you just to listen closely. I ask you to listen closely to these admonitions from the Bible. You can seek the Lord because he still can be found. Zephaniah said, seek the Lord, but you have to humble yourself. And you can humble yourself. God commands humility. He said, I will resist the proud, but I will give grace to the humble. Sinners can humble themselves. Every place in the Old Testament where a wicked person, king or ruler or individual, every time someone humbled themselves, God was merciful to them. So Zephaniah says to you, seek the Lord. Seek him. Seek righteousness. Seek humility. Seek Jesus Christ, the only Savior of the world. Because God says, if you will seek him, it may be that you will be hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. Meaning, if you come to know Christ today in this pandemic, it's the greatest thing that could happen in your whole, whole life. Because it doesn't matter if this pandemic ends and you don't get it and you're phys physically healthy. If you continue on in your sins, you will, your sins will perish you, put you in hell because you do not have peace with God. So Zephaniah says, seek the Lord. Now Isaiah says it even more clearly. This is to the wicked. This is to the unrighteous. This is the person who does not know Christ. Seek the Lord while he may be found. There's a day coming 
he will not be able to be found. There's a day coming, then the Bible says that, that men will be filled with terror and they will be seeking to hide themselves from the wrath of the Lamb of God. The Lord Jesus Christ is now a gracious Savior. But in the, in the final day when he returns, all mercy is gone. He will come as judge to judge the living and the dead. He will come in, in flaming fire with all his mighty angels, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel. So seek the Lord today while he may be found. You don't have tomorrow. We have today. Call upon him while he's near. He's near everyone. He's, he's near everyone. He's everywhere. Let the wicked, what are we to do as an unbeliever? Forsake his way. Turn to God and tell him, my sin is evil. All I am is a sinner, and I want to turn to you from being sinful. Let the wicked forsake his way and even his thoughts. Every thought that's negative, sinful, unbelieving that you would have that steers you away from turning to Christ, forsake those thoughts. He's calling to you in the gospel. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe upon him would not perish but have everlasting life. Return to the Lord. Go to him. You don't have to know anything. You just have to know I'm a sinner and I need a Savior and Christ is the only Savior. And the Bible says at the end of verse 7, Isaiah 55, 7, he will have mercy on you. He will abundantly pardon your sins, all of them, and wash you as white as snow. So, dear brother and sister in Christ, dear friend who's not in Christ today, let us seek the Lord. I told one of our prayer meetings almost two weeks ago, I think something is remarkable that's happening right now. That every Christian, true Christian around the world, every true Christian that is around the world, God has their undivided attention, probably. Their seriousness is heightened. Their spiritual mindedness is heightened. Every believer in the world knows that God is at work in this. And every believer is probably more prayerful than ever. Gospel churches are more prayerful than ever. God has the attention of his church and of his people. And his call is, seek me and live. Seek me and find rest. Seek me in prayer and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you have not even thought about yet. So, I wonder if anyone has any questions, you can raise your hand. Yes, sir. There's no hands. We there we are, Jared. Any questions? Nope, no questions. All right. Well, let me pray and then speak this benediction to us. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the blessed and certain exhortation and promise to seek you, and those who seek you truly will find you. Now unto him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. God bless you today. And join me Wednesday if you can, same time. And I'll share a word that I trust will be from the Lord for us. God bless you. We love you.